There were two types of kids when I was growing up in Colorado, Sega kids and Nintendo kids. The vast majority of us were Nintendo kids, and we knew in the very depths of our souls that Mario games were far superior to Sonic games. We were later vindicated by, you know, the constant stream of incredible Mario games and the fact that Sega dipped out of the console manufacturing business completely after the commercial failure of the Dreamcast. If there's one place where both Sega and Nintendo have failed miserably together, it's the film space. We had a complete abomination in 1993 with the Super Mario Brothers movie, which involved everyone doing their best to ruin the livelihoods of respectable actors Bob Hoskins, John Leguizamo, and Dennis Hopper. If that piece of trash film is the worst of the worst, there's a pretty long history of movies chasing its tail. Here's a list of some of the worst offenders. Rampage, Need for Speed, Tomb Raider, I think there were two with Angelina Jolie in a reboot a couple years ago, Silent Hill, Max Payne, Doom, not sure who convinced The Rock to sign up for that, Assassin's Creed, Warcraft, ugh, two Street Fighter movies, two Hitman movies, Postal, Wing Commander, Alone in the Dark, Double Dragon, Blood Rain, and finally Mortal Kombat Annihilation. You know what? I'm changing my list. That is the worst video game movie of all time. So in 2017, Paramount Pictures decided it would be a great time to produce and release a combination CG live action Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Wait, what? At some point after that, it was announced that Jim Carrey would be playing the villain, Dr. Robotnik, AKA Eggman, and everyone felt like this was all a very, 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 very bad idea. Things were compounded significantly in the middle of 2019 when the first trailer for the movie came out and Sonic looked absolutely terrifying. He had tiny eyes and these weirdish hands and the backlash on social media was insane. The memes were fantastic though. The backlash regarding Sonic's look was so intense that director Jeff Fowler had to come out and explain on social media that they were going to go back and change Sonic to look more like the games. Seriously, this was Fowler's first time directing a major film and he had to convince Paramount freaking pictures that a video game movie needed to be delayed by three months so they could fix the look of their CGI alien hedgehog. Do you guys all remember 2019 when we weren't all locked up in our homes? This is the stuff we were getting worked up over. Okay, so we roll into 2020 and the movie is finally released in the middle of February. So how bad is it? Honestly, it's really not that bad. Sonic the Hedgehog is absolutely a kid's movie, so that's something you should expect going in. James Mardson plays the exact same dumb, slightly relatable human male that he plays in every other movie. In this instance, he's the first human to meet the titular hedgehog, and they develop a friendship, etc, etc. Look, the plot of this movie is exactly what you expect, and that's okay. Everything you hear is predictable, and this isn't going to win any awards for its acting, writing, or directing. The best part of this movie is actually Jim Carrey. He takes a very two-dimensional part and transforms it into an absurd spectacle that actually made me pause the movie on a handful of occasions because I couldn't stop laughing. Carrey has been directly responsible for some of the funniest movies ever made and elevates this material far above what the script calls for. Seriously, he's a lot funnier here than any of the marketing materials would indicate, and they were smart to leave all of his best moments out of the trailers. Ben Schwartz does an admirable job as Sonic, bringing an absurd level of energy to his performance and making the audience understand why this hedgehog has such a hard time standing still. Sonic's relationship with Robotnik is basically established during the course of this movie and will clearly be developed upon in the inevitable sequel. The decision that was made to update and improve the look of Sonic has turned out to be for the best. The creature looks about as good as you can expect given the circumstances, and Fowler should be commended for doing everything necessary to ensure his movie was in the best possible shape prior to release. This must have been a tough call by Paramount too, but it was the right one. The movie brought in $300 million at the global box office, which actually makes it the most successful video game adaptation of all time. These numbers were slightly blunted by the massive theater shutdowns that started happening in the weeks after its release, so they then decided to rush it out to digital as quickly as possible. Okay, so Sonic the Hedgehog is far better than it should have been. Despite being a lean, 90-minute buddy comedy about a fast blue alien demon creature made of space lightning, and this is as family-friendly as it gets. Kudos to everyone involved for taking the time to get things right. Thank you so much for checking out the review. If you enjoy my content, please subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell. You can also like, share, or comment below, and I'll see you next time.